Cheers, guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Got a lot going on in the old Pancast today. We're going to talk Debouillet, Carbon Steel, Du Parquet, Copper Cookware, uh, signs of shrinkflation again at Costco with some Kirkland paper towels. I got a chorizo update from Spain and more. Let's jump in and get started. This morning, I sent my son to the storage room and asked him to go get a roll of paper towels, and he brought this back. And it seemed a little bit odd to me. I couldn't figure out uh, why it seemed odd, so I went in there and I had some older ones, and the older ones are like this. These are both rolls of Costco uh, Kirkland paper towels. And a few months ago, we talked about signs of shrinkflation in the paper towels, where, whether you were getting fewer sheets per roll now it appears, and this is an older roll and this is a newer roll, it appears that you're no longer getting individually plastic wrapped rolls. So that may be a cost cutting measure there, another sign of perhaps shrinkflation in the economy, if you want to call it that. My question there, and that's fine to do, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me, but once you have cut out the wrapping, where do you go from there? You can't cut it out again. Um, what can they do? They can make the little cardboard tube a little bit wider. Uh, they could shave an eighth of an inch off. I don't think the world would come to an end, but where is the next cost-cutting slash shrinkflation measure going to come from? Who knows? Okay, the big Debouillet carbon steel sale only for us here at Uncle Scott's Kitchen. They gave us a special discount code. If you have any interest at all in Debouillet carbon steel cookware, this is the best discount I have seen on it in four years of covering Debouillet, and it's only for us here at Uncle Scott's Kitchen, anybody watching this video. That is code SCOTT30. Use that at checkout. I'll put an affiliate shopping link below, and it's 30% off of carbon steel. Um, what I thought I might do, uh, lots of people are taking advantage of this uh, sale, and they've been writing me and telling me the pans that they got with the code. I think it might be fun to kind of see some of you guys with your pans. And what I've done is created a Facebook post, and I'll put a link to it below here. And if you're watching this on TV and can't easily click uh, links with your remote control, I'll put this also on the front page of UncleScottsKitchen.com. But I thought there, anybody that wants to, completely voluntary, post a picture of yourself with your uh, carbon steel pants. And if we get uh, a lot of nice pictures, I'll compile it into a, a slideshow. Be nice to see some of you guys, and we'll put it at the end of a pancast. So that might be fun to do. Um, I had several people write in about the sale. Uh, one person wrote in from Hawaii and said that they couldn't get stuff shipped to Hawaii. Um, I asked Debouye about that and they say, unfortunately, they don't ship to Alaska or Hawaii. Um, let's see, Neil, US Zero, and Anna Bizarro wrote in. They were from Europe, uh, one from London, and asked if the, if the discount code works over there. Unfortunately, uh, it is US only. So, uh, I have people writing from Canada. It does not work in Canada or Europe, sorry to say. And I'm going to talk to Debouillet about this uh, after the new year. It's kind of uh, hysteria season in the uh, cookware world at the moment with all the Black Friday stuff going on. But uh, we'll see if we can get something going for the um, people outside the U.S. in the, in the uh, next year. A um, little interesting fact here, about 43% of the people that watch Uncle Scott's Kitchen videos outside the United States, so quite a few, few people from Europe and around the world. Speaking of an international audience, let's go ahead and talk about chorizo and paella for one comment here. We've been talking about uh, the debate over chorizo sausage. Is it okay to use chorizo sausage or not when you try to make authentic Spanish paella? Soft as chalk wrote in, and I'm just gonna read this. Hi Scott, as a professional chef from Alicante, Valencian community, Spain, Holy cow, how much more credibility could you get? And he says, don't worry about the paella police. We're just like the Italians. We love to fight and call names to each other over food over here. If anyone says something to you, tell them that I, a thoroughbred Valencian, gave you permission to put chorizo or whatever you like on a paella rice except for frozen peas because you helped me choose a carbon frying pan. I got you, brother. So thank you very much to Soft as Chalk. And if we want to, we now have permission from Spain to use chorizo if we want. Next up, this is Du Parquet, 10 line copper, um, 12 and a half inch saute pan. 
I did an unboxing video on this guy the other day. I just wanted to show how it changes. So the other day it was brand new, shiny, a showpiece. This is what it looks like after being cooked in two times. I cooked in it twice last night and you can see some uh, discoloration. You can see where the, uh, where it sat on the burner and it's now got scratches on it. Hard to see, but it went from show pan to now being a working pan. Um, I've been in a bit of a panic about this pan because I've read all the horror stories online about melting the tin. So I was very, very attentive. Uh, the first thing I did was cook some potatoes and then I also cooked some chicken marsala. I was gonna cook the chicken marsala first, but I kinda chickened out, if you will, and um, cooked the potatoes first. And I think my marsala turned out, it was okay last night, and I just had a couple of pieces left over for lunch. Somehow it was better left over the next day than it was right out of the pan. I don't know. This is the way it goes sometimes. But after I cleaned the pan, I noticed a little bit of waviness in the surface of the tin. And I panicked. I thought, well, I've already melted the tin. I have messed it up. I actually got on a site called Vintage French Copper. I highly recommend Vintage French Copper. Not only do they talk obviously about vintage stuff, but they have all kinds of uh, copper advice and tin advice. Fantastic site. And there was an article on there saying that this happens when tin is new and that is nothing to worry about. That is not melted tin, that is the structure of the tin. And I'll put up a link to the article. It gets into molecules and scientific stuff. But that is the uh, tin uh, kind of changing its crystalline structure, believe it or not. So very nice to know. And once again, if you're into copper, definitely check out Vintage French Copper. Kind of interesting story here. I don't know who runs Vintage French Copper. They don't take advertisements, there's no real about section and I have uh, swapped email with the person that runs it before and they won't say if they're a man or a woman, they won't say a name, they don't want any credit, they don't want any advertising revenue, it's purely a labor of love and a rare selfless act you see on the internet. So whoever does that site, um, I salute you, I toast you, I don't know who you are, I would love to have you on for an interview. But thank you for putting up such a wonderful site about copper cookware. Vintage French copper, check them out. Let's see, 22 Brew 80 says, Uncle Scott, I saw that Duparquet lines some of their pans with silver. And he's wondering if I might get a silver lined um, copper frying pan. I am already in hot water with the uh, wife for getting this tin lined. Um, if I get a silver lined, and I also note that they make a solid silver uh, frying pan, if I were to get one of those, I think it would end up with a dent in it, roughly the shape of my head, if my wife got a hold of that. So I'm happy with the tin line now. Maybe someday we might move up to other metals. Catherine C. 2123 wrote in, worried about the retinning of copper cookware. Um, according to the um, Duparquet site, usually these pans, especially for home use, um, might not need to be retinned for 10 or 20 years. And honestly, I hope I have another 10 or 20 years. Let's see, Film AADIN wrote in and said, Hi Scott, I'd like to know about your motivation to buy and review this piece of cookware. That gets into a little bit of philosophy. Uh, tin line copper is old school. That's the way um, the high-end chefs used to, uh, that's the cookware they used to use. I think a lot of the high-end chefs still use it. I am interested in the older, slower way of doing things. So these days you might see these short videos and people reducing recipes and videos to 40, 50 seconds, or you might see a recipe where they're kind of doing like a weeknight version of a classic recipe, like a 45 minute weeknight bolognese. I don't really care about that. Um, I get it, I understand that it's a faster world these days and people need to save time. I like the older, slower, old school way of doing things. I've eaten my share of fast food in the day, and now I want to do real deal cooking. And if I do a bolognese, it's four hours. And um, a lot of people don't do stuff like that these days. And I think the tin line copper kind of fits into that mentality at least, that kind of old school, slow food mentality. Um, I also think um, it's interesting. I like cookware, I'm into it. so. 
Um, I just like having the variety and checking it out. And uh, so far I've only cooked in it twice. I'm not ready to throw out all my old cookware and get all tin line copper by any means, but it's interesting. So you have to learn new skills and um, you kind of learn the older proper way of doing things. If you're interested in what I am pouring today, this is a little Angel's Envy and Fever Tree ginger beer with a football shaped ice cube. Pretty tasty. And now just a slight bit of nagging, normally my wife's department, but I'm gonna do it a little bit this week. Um, it is go time for those of us who like cooking and cookware. We got all the holidays and big meals coming up. We gotta be ready. What I did this past week was uh, started with a deep clean on my uh, stove top and boy, did it need it. Um, I took some ammonia, put some ammonia in some Ziploc bags, about a quarter cup per bag, and put my burner rings in there. And if you leave that overnight, make sure you open the windows and keep them out in the garage. Uh, you don't want to be overcome by fumes, but that loosens that gunk up. I uh, gave the stove a deep clean. Uh, one mistake I made was putting some of my brass burners down there in the ammonia, and I got a little bit of tarnish on there, so I have an upcoming date with a bottle of Brasso. Gonna get those fixed up, but the stove looks a lot better. Um, get your oven shaped up, sharpen your knives. Also, um, this time of year, we all tend to make recipes that we don't make other times of the year. And I know my wife will occasionally send me to the grocery store for allspice, marjoram, uh, star anise, any kind of slightly obscure ingredient, go ahead and buy it now. Don't go the day before Thanksgiving when it's liable to be sold out. So this is kind of mise en place for the entire cooking season. Let's all be on our A games and get ready to go. Ross Bickers 8649 wrote in about my pocket knife, which you may have seen me use to open packages. Uh, my dad got me this for Christmas one year. This is a buck folding hunter. Pocket knife, definitely don't want to try and go through TSA with this guy. I note I have never actually skinned a buck with it, but as far as opening packages, it goes through cardboard like nobody's business. Uh, very nice buck knife if you're interested in pocket knives. Finally, you might notice I have slimmed down a little bit around here. I've now lost 41 pounds. So give myself a little pat on the back. If you're interested in knowing what I did, it's taken me about seven months. And how I got in trouble was I ate too much, I drank too much, and I didn't exercise enough. And that kind of got out of hand over last winter. And I kind of had a dad beer belly, a dad bod that kind of got out of hand a little bit. And um, I stepped on the scale one day and the scale said, get off me fat ass. And I knew it was time to do something. So I did the fast diet. And essentially I got that, uh, that math equation back in my favor. Um, I ate less, drank less and exercised more. And two days a week I fasted. So usually Mondays and Thursdays, I just didn't eat anything. Now this is not medical advice for you, uh, especially if you're a land whale with a gland problem. Um, I have no idea, but if you're kind of got the dad bod that got a little bit out of hand, it may or may not work, who knows for you but it did work for me. So what do they always say? This above all else to thine own self be true. I think the fast diet appeals to me. I like food and drink. And my stock answers are, I love God, country, family, friends, but right underneath that is food and drink. Um, I tend to eat a little bit and drink a little bit too much on the weekends because there's people over, there's football on, there's wine open, and it just, that's just the way it goes. That's who I am. But that Monday fast, I fast on Mondays and Thursdays. I feel like that Monday fast kind of resets after a weekend. And then that Thursday fast kind of prepares you for the upcoming weekend. I don't know. The other thing I like about it is there are no supplements, shakes, special dietary restrictions, uh, you know, carbs. You can eat carbs. You can eat whatever you want. Uh, just not on two days per week. So I kind of like that. Two days a week, get it over with. The other days... I eat and drink whatever I want, and it worked for me. 
So if you're interested, check it out. The Fast Diet, there are plenty of channels on YouTube and books about it, but it worked pretty well for me. Speaking of eating and drinking, I'm about to do some. And watch a little football. Make sure you check out that Debouye 30% off sale if you're interested at all in Debouye carbon steel cookware. Code SCOTT30 at checkout. There'll be an affiliate link below and on unclescottskitchen.com. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.